<laughs> yeah, I, I I don't know about all that. Like, um, dude, I I don't know. Hey, dude. sometimes you just gotta take a shit. You gotta just, go when you gotta go. Yeah, no, I totally understand. Nature calls. You better fucking answer, man, because <laughs> otherwise, uh, shit's going down, and it might not be Literally. going down where you want it to go. So, in fact, it so might not go, go down at up. all. It might, yeah, it might come back up, and that would be a problem. <laughs> Oh god, that would be awful. That would I mean it's happened. I'm I'm sure we've all been there. And that's why you <laughs> no, never have it's carpet. Never come back up. It's why you never have carpet in your bathtub bathroom. Like I don't Oh, know. okay, you mean in that case, yeah. Yeah, what the hell were you thinking, man? What's... I mean just like No, we're I, not I don't puking know what I was we're not puking turds, man. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. Hey everybody, welcome to the Ungodly Geeks. I'm Luke. Hello, I'm Rube. whatever. <laughs> Rue whatever. So how you doing, Rue whatever? <laughs> Rue whatever is fine. <laughs> okay, great. Rue and, whatever. I'm and of course, whatever. I'm Joe. Uh, we're doing things a little differently here today. If you're watching on the YouTube video, uh, you get to see my stupid face as we sit here. Um, we're, re we're recording over Discord, so if you hear any sort of weird, uh, you know, sound errors, there's not much I can do mm -hmm. about that. So. Or me munching yeah. on foods. Yeah, she does that a lot. <laughs> so I mean, only professionals. But yeah, we figured we'd try something out. Uh, something a little different. Uh, this this is definitely sort of a test a test thing, but we are releasing it as a full episode. So because that. that's how we do. And I am incredibly lazy. So yeah. fucking sue me. Also, I don't care. full disclosure: if I sound very nasally or am hacking or anything like that, I've got like a random beginning of summer end of winter it is like 30 degrees it's not summer yet cold that has like been destroying me for the last, last night and today okay but to be fair like four days ago it was like we were experiencing early summer weather so it was like 75 degrees and yeah now it's down to 20s again at 75 that's degrees fahrenheit that's that's roughly 25 degrees celsius for those of us who uh don't know fahrenheit <clears throat> so kind of on the warmer side compared to yeah. winter temperatures. So anyway, our topic of discussion today, none of which, um, any of us, we, none of us have researched this, admittedly. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of something that just happens if you're a gamer. Yeah, yeah, of course. We're going to talk about games that, whose development cycles lasted entirely too long. Yeah. Or we're just really, really long, but we still got something good out of it. Like, did you guys know Shenmue took six years in development? Yeah, yeah. That, that was, was a game that I never played myself. Right. But uh, watching videos about it, seeing like they constantly brought it up on like X Play and those other video gaming shows. Right. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's like a game that I've never played, but I'm like, no, yeah, I totally know that game. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, you've totally heard of it. It, it's it's a really apparently it's a really 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 good game, and I I I don't know about it. Um, I think I can vaguely remember us having it on Dreamcast because, of course, we had a Dreamcast. Um, but I can't ever remember playing it. But, yeah, apparently it was a really, really good yeah. game. And uh, it was one of those things that was extremely ambitious at the time. I and mean, we're talking 1994 to 2000. And uh, one of the biggest things that made it so ambitious was the fact that they wanted every single character to be voice acted. Yeah. Every single one. And that and, was a big deal. That's a big deal back then, especially. I mean, yeah, like, are you, yeah, back when you you didn't have the kind of space for games and all that that we have today, you know, you're looking at Sega Saturn still using compact discs, and even the Dreamcast still used compact discs. So you're looking at that 700 megabyte limit. Um, that 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 is definitely a, a huge huge deal. I don't know what Voodoo that uh, Sega worked to compress that stuff to fit it onto a single CD in some instances although there I think this game was multiple discs but it's apparently like, something that Voodoo that cost them like 50 million dollars yeah yeah the game's budget was between 47 and 70 million like 47 million and 70 million which for the time oh was yeah it was mind blowing it's one of those things where if in order for them to just break even every single Dreamcast owner would have needed to buy two copies oh god yeah just when and that's before 
you factor in microtransactions, loot boxes, yada, yada, yada. The game, the industry will complain now about money. Yeah. No, fuck you. You did yeah. shit like this back in the 90s. Yeah, and, and none of... Whatever. Well, no, you're right. This is 94 to 2000. It was released yeah, okay, in 2000. Yeah. So, yeah, you're looking at late 90s. It's like... Jesus. Yeah, what's wrong with you guys? Like, we're not the one... I, 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 I don't know. I guess I, I know I can't speak for everybody, but I'm not someone who demands photorealism from their games. You know, no. like I, I'm not someone who does that. So I, I don't know where this is all coming from, but Hey, whatever. Another game yeah, though yeah. that I didn't know took so long to develop was team fortress two. I didn't realize that game was in development for nine years. Neither did I. I was honestly surprised. <laughs> yeah, like, that's a game, I mean, seriously, 1998 to 2007. It was released in, in late 2007. And, of course, you yeah. guys know the original Team Fortress was made as a Quake mod. And yeah, it wasn't, like, it wasn't even a... <clears throat> yeah, no, it wasn't even a game. It was um, it was a mod for Quake, and it was, uh, but, uh, from what I understand, Valve was so impressed that they, uh, they hired the team to remake the mod for Half-Life, uh, if I remember correctly. And, um, you know, they came on, they did that, and then they started working on it. Uh, well, actually, it was after they created the mod, they were they decided to make a sequel to it in 90, like 98, 99, whatever, and were hired by, a mod, by Valve then to do it. And um, Team Fortress 2 back started being developed. Valve made games. Yeah, yeah, back when Valve still made games and didn't just make all their money from Steam. Um, yeah, they sat there and started developing it as a standalone game, and that was like 1999 when it was revealed at E3. And then it went through so much different stuff because it was originally like a serious military shooter, and eventually it was, yeah. you know... I, I don't know, uh, delays... It was the first of these squad-based shooting... Uh, I think, I mean, maybe not the first, but this kind of... This <clears throat> this took off as squad-based first-person shooting, like, uh, uh, different classes for everybody. Yeah, less, right. Less Battlefield-type big objectives and smaller maps. Same type of game modes. I, I mean, it's, it's kind of taken off. It right. took off for a while. Yeah, no, and, uh... I don't even know. know what you'd call that. It's not a MOBA, but... Uh, I, I don't know, just online multiplayer shooter type game. I mean, honestly, yeah. when you look at the words that make up MOBA, it, it, it is a MOBA. Like, that's okay. exactly yeah, what okay. it is, yeah. a multi, multiplayer online battle arena. And that's exactly what Team Fortress 2 is. It's It's just like, Overwatch is just like it. Yeah, Just, exactly. Overwatch, Overwatch is basically is like, Team Fortress. But it's prettier yeah. with more heroes. And yeah. honestly, I, I'd have to say, even though I, 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 on principle, I won't play or buy Overwatch because microtransactions and gambling and all that, I can't, I don't support that kind of, of thing in the industry. Um, it, I have to admit, I like the look and feel of Overwatch. Overwatch looks pretty. It, it looks like it plays really well, and I can't bash it for that, but it's, it's the fact I, I will bash it always for the microtransactions, yeah. and I will always bash it for the loot boxes, and even if it's not you know needed to I mean, play the game. Far. And even if it is just cosmetic, <clears throat> that's not an excuse, and that's why it's because of stuff like Overwatch that has been allowed to proliferate. <clears throat> Pardon me, I have something stuck in my throat. Um, it's been allowed to proliferate into what it is today in other games where we've got <clears throat> Battlefront 2. <coughs> yeah. it, it made the money, so then everyone else was like, hey, we want the money. Right, let's yeah. Let's make the money. Let's, let's not um, make I mean, a bunch of money. Let's make all of the money. Which, okay, I get it. This was a good it. example. Oh, right. sorry. Well, yeah, like, I get it. That's what you're in business to do. You're in the business to make money. You know, <clears throat> but, I mean, come on. Are you not satisfied with several hundred million dollars? You know. Of course not. <laughs> no, we have to have several billion dollars. Oh, fuck you. Duh. Prey on people's addictions and things like that. Yeah, prey on. But, um, uh, prey on their weaknesses. This is a really good example of like that early Valve development style. Keep it totally secret. 
go through and polish and make the game to be exactly what they want. And then continually, they upgraded this game more and more over time. Of course, they had then added hats. They added loot boxes and things like that. Oh, God, the hats. <laughs> oh, the hats. That was always funny. Such a... I mean, that, that basically turned the game into a meme factory. Like, 100% yeah. meme factory. <clears throat> I mean, it was already a meme game, but then... Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, totally all the frickin' up. videos. Oh, oh, oh yeah. God. Uh, it, I yeah, all the, all the Gary's Mod videos. Play, yeah, no, that, that was oh, pretty I cool. Love the, I love those. That's one of those the, games uh, that, like, works and things like that. Yeah, yeah. That's one of those games that I know I've played. Um, and Ooh. if I pull up my, like my Steam library and I look at its entry, it says I've played like nine hours. <clears throat> I can't remember playing nine hours of Team Fortress Two. <laughs> so, I can I can I can remember maybe like half an hour hour play. So I'm sitting there thinking, did I like? open the game, leave it on, and fall asleep or something? That's I don't know. possible, I guess. Yeah, I actually, I never owned it on PC. Right. Um, I don't even think I got the, the red box or whatever it came in. The orange box. Orange box, yeah. Yeah, that's what um, it was. I owned it on the uh, Xbox 360. Right, yeah. Um, <clears throat> no, no I, I never had it on any other platform. Like, I didn't even play Valve games until I joined steam in february yeah. of 2012 so <clears throat> i don't know man um i liked i honestly for as long as the development they have and there's games that we'll talk about that that's a negative thing but right. um when it comes to developers like valve um blizzard they will take that long time and they really do make the game as complete and polished and done as possible which i do have some respect for I mean, yeah, no, any time that you got a developer that does take their time, like, like they're not delaying it because they're retarded. They're delaying it because they want to make sure it's, it's as complete as can be. I always love that. Like I openly yeah. encourage that. And that's, <clears throat> I mean, these game companies now that churn out a new game every year, slow your roll. Yeah. Please. Just, just stop it. it chill. Seriously. No. When we when we came up with this idea, the first game that comes to my mind was a game on again on the Xbox 360 that I was incredibly excited for for quite a long time, like I think a little even before that console came out. Right. Um, one of the longest development times for a game that I've ever played uh, was Prey. Yeah. Eleven years in development. That yeah. game was supposed to be like old school PC shooter. They kept just delaying it. They kept throwing out what they had decided no 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 we want to make it better we want to make it better and honestly when the game came out it was it, it was legitimately pretty mind-blowing graphically right um, yeah the stuff they put into that game it was the um, crisis so it was of this time game. yeah <laughs> it was it really it, it really was yeah i no. still remember seeing the the e3 video like f four years before it came out i think and it was like oh my god i have to have that game delay right after delay after delay after delay but it turned out to be pretty good. Right. Um, like, not something you're going to replay or anything like that. Right. No, it's, it's, a, it's a one and done. was mediocre. But for a story-driven first-person shooter, that game was awesome. And, you know, that that's uh, that's getting to a point now where, you know, you got these companies that are trying to kill off first-person. Or, like, story-driven games, rather. It's like, guys, don't do that. Trust yeah. me. Story game. First, like, single-player solo story-driven games, they're nowhere near done. In fact, they are yeah. still the bread and butter of the video game industry. So I don't get how anybody can sit there and go, oh, they're dying. It's all multiplayer games. No, it's it's really not. 90% mm -hmm. of the games that people like me play are single-player solo games that don't have any sort of multiplayer uh, component. And if they do, it's, it's either co-op or optional, completely optional. So yeah. Um, see, that's the thing. You say that. The first game that came to mind for me uh, was Duke Nukem Forever. I was gonna say there's there's two big games yeah, that are on like, the opposite end of the spectrum. Yeah, and no, that's like uh, the biggest. It was it was Duke Nukem Forever that that popped into my head. Um, it's like 
and we covered this on our most disappointing games list and it's one of those games i i, I got it off of uh, steam for like five bucks i've yet to play it but i do have Ugh. it installed and i do have it ready to go and uh, when i get everything settled with my times and schedule um i'll probably be playing it on stream just i gotta have other people there to validate it being terrible but um <laughs> That was one of those things, um, <clears throat> it was announced in 97. Development, however, began a year earlier, 96. <laughs> and um, it, it ended up getting delayed, getting delayed. Um, I think the license holder at some point uh, like went under or had to, had to sell off assets or something. And nobody was doing it. I know 3D Realms I think at some point had to sell it off to Gearbox I want to say yeah I know Gearbox, Gearbox and 2K the, uh, they ultimately put it out because this is this is like their thing yeah is putting out garbage that's been in development for way too long gone through just bad engine after bad engine yeah and apparently Gearbox is like no no we'll we'll scrape up that shit turd and set it out there to the public yeah I mean uh I mean, it was one. It was an. It was a situation where the creators of the original game spent like twenty million dollars of their own money to fund the game, and I guess Take Two Interactive wanted to fund the game and they refused, and so like ninety nine percent of the staff was laid off. Like everybody was just, yeah. oh okay, well whatever. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna. We're not gonna sit there and pay for it. And then I guess the game was only released because I guess Gearbox's CEO was a fan of Duke Nukem Jesus. and he personally made sure it got released. And if that was Randy Pitchford, which I don't know if he was at the time, we're talking 2011, so it might have been. If that was Randy Pitchford, why? Just yeah. why? He's he's not got a good track record. Yeah. I still remember being in a GameStop with a buddy of mine. Uh, shout out to Eddie. And Eddie. guy asks us, do you want to pre-order Duke Nukem Forever? And Eddie goes, that game's not getting made. He's like, yeah, no, you can pre-order it now. And he's like, until I have that game in my hand with a receipt, that game does not exist. <laughs> and it will yeah. never exist. Yeah, I don't blame what, you. What, what was that? Uh, like, what year? That was not the final release, by the way. I think that was a few years before. So you're looking <laughs> like 2008. <laughs> you're yeah. looking like 2008. And like that, that's, that's, that's something else, man, because I mean... I, this game spent uh, what, what? What's the math on that? Uh, Nineteen ninety six to two thousand eleven, fifteen years in development. Jesus fucking Christ! Yeah, like that's insane, so unfortunate. man. That they, and it, they did that to Duke. And yeah, and for it to come out and be so bad, so yep. thoroughly terrible, and that's why it's just, for me it's a curiosity. Like I want, I I love Duke Nukem. I love the original side scroller games. Um, they're not quite as good as Duke Nukem 3D in my opinion, but I love Duke Nukem 3D. Uh, I liked Duke Nukem Zero Hour on the Nintendo 64. I wish that that could get a a, a PC re-release, even if it doesn't get an HD remaster. I'd I'd love mm -hmm. to be able to play that with mouse and keyboard, um, without doing emulation because emulation's just never as good as it could be. But um. I would love to see like a proper port of that to PC, like they've done with uh, Turok and Turok Two. Um, yeah, because that that game it was a third person shooter. It had a lot of really unique and cool wow, weapons. I don't remember that at all. Yeah, no, it was Nintendo sixty four, and uh, yeah. if I recall correctly, you didn't have one, right? Oh no, I had a sixty four. I didn't have uh, any PlayStation or Sega consoles. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Well, then... Yes, N64 was the first console I got <clears throat> that was, like, mine, straight out of the box. Ah. Before that, I had a hand-me-down NES that was, like, broken a week. It's fantastic. So, yeah, yeah. no, I mean, <laughs> it was on... It was on there, and it was pretty good, man, but... I, and like I said, I enjoyed it, and I'd like to see that ported. Um, yeah. But we're gonna move on to another game. We got Aliens Colonial Marines. That was... That's the that. game... On the other side, or not on the other side, same thing. Yeah, it's on the uh, same end as, as, as Premium. That, that's why I was like, you know what, let, we're sitting here, we're talking about Nukem Forever, let's talk about this other pile of shit game. I've which... shit, I think I've shit on that game more than, like, I need to, but yeah, I, I absolutely hate 
everything about that game. Yeah, yeah. And everything about Gearbox, they're lying, fucking bullshit with development, with, or not with development, with uh, advertising. Yeah, this and just yeah, no, fuck Gearbox. Fuck yeah, the, yeah. Game. This is just another one of those games that Gearbox fucked up. It's where they made one really, really good game in Borderlands Two, and then. Mm-hmm. They've been riding the coattails of that game since, and uh, oh my! Well, technically, I guess Colonial Marines was released either before or right around, um, you know. But yeah, it was oh god, it was terrible. It, it was, it was, it wasn't even like I blame Gearbox. Like they were developing it, right? Um, like with Duke Nukem Forever. That one is like, yeah, it's Gearbox's fault, less because they developed it, more just because they put it out. Yeah, it's almost the same way with this game. This game's a little bit more their fault because they were the like the main people working on it with Sega. Yeah, it was like, a, yeah, oh it was God. a matter where Sega bought the license in like the mm-hmm. early to mid two thousands, and they hired uh, Gearbox to make the game, and using using the rights to the franchise, of course. They announced Colonial Marines in 2008. Um, the game was in development for five years because it didn't release till 2013. Uh, Sega wanted to cancel the game uh, at one point because uh, Gearbox took people off the project to work on Borderlands. It's just classic gearbox but like the, <laughs> the shitty thing is is that they were still taking money from sega like they were still taking payments as if they were working on colonial marines yep which is like oh so not only are you you know doing bad development you're also doing shitty business practices like uh, yeah that's pretty cool thanks guys um and Absolutely of course retarded. when it released and we've this is another one of those games that I'm uh, we we covered in the disappointing games uh, list. That was just it was just so bad, terrible AI and just game bugs of you know in gameplay and in responsiveness and just terrible 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 stuff. And then the fact that you don't even fight xenomorphs really, you fight other humans for a large portion of the game. Yeah, like it's like. Dude, and the xenomorphs when you do fight them were awful it's god is it so bad yeah it's not it's not worth playing it's not worth looking at like i've heard there's a, a big mod that apparently makes it better but yeah but i mean it, come that. on dude like like at this point yeah who who would go really... play avp from uh 2000 <laughs> yeah i Go play the uh, Doom 2 Total Conversion mod from, like, the early 90s. It turns Doom into <laughs> Aliens because it's so much there better. Um, so let, yeah, let's, I don't doubt that. Let's reel it back. Let's talk about a well, game that ended up being good. Okay. Um, StarCraft 2. Wings of Liberty. Yeah, I don't know. That was a – I mean, it's a, it's a great game. If you love real-time strategy games, it's fantastic. And uh, that actually took seven years to develop, which is insane I mean, to me. Blizzard Blizzard games could probably fill this entire list. Diablo two, Diablo th- or at least Diablo three. Yeah, Diablo um, three. Fucking uh, long time. Well, I, like okay, the, the thing is, is that um, they didn't even reveal that it was a thing um, until like two thousand seven, but development on the game began in two thousand three. Yeah. So it's like for four years. Blizzard takes their time. They have their own like complete method of game development that's They're just whatever. Like, right, We're gonna do our own it, shit. It's gonna come out eventually. Or it'll it'll happen. Yeah. So. And you know, at least with them, you've got a wee bit of hope with right. Right. with uh Valve now, the Half Life Two the Half Life Three is not happening. Uh, uh, what with with uh, with Blizzard these days, uh, the fact that they're now Activision Blizzard. Um, oh yeah. Well, you're def- going to get loot boxes in it too, but the game will probably come out. I mean, the game will come <laughs> out, but the chances of you being disappointed by it um, <laughs> froze significantly now. Uh, in my honest opinion, I just uh, I can't See, put faith into Activision. I don't. And- I don't have faith in Activision, and I'm not a big fan of Blizzard games. I'll put right. that out there, but. I do know that when Activision acquired Blizzard, um, the con- and, and and I can't remember exactly 
the way it was written or the way uh, it was said that it was written anyway. Right. But from what I've heard, the contract, everything about it, Blizzard was very, very specific exactly what Activision could and couldn't do. And because Activision knew Blizzard would make them a lot, a lot of money, Activision went, yep, whatever you want, we'll sign it. Just you're ours now. And like they make their own date release dates right, they make their right. own choices uh like activision essentially is just that it, it's not like a lot of other video game developers uh where ea is breathing down your neck the whole time uh with blizzard activision is like as long as you're making us money make us more money right which um okay <laughs> i mean like i said you get into business to make money so might as well make some money oh yeah i mean that's the way they do it Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Of course, these long development cycles and things like that, uh, and it's not always a great thing. No, it's for... not. No, I mean, because I mean, as we've we've already mentioned, two games where the development cycles were long and they were awful. Yeah. I mean, they should. At some point, you would think that somebody must have been like, "This is like we we've we've scrapped or." We're using what we don't want to use, but we're putting it together. It, somebody should have been like, no, this is a bad idea. But, yeah, something somewhere along ugh. the line, someone had to be aware of that, what they were doing. Just, I mean, come on. You, you can't tell me that at some point you didn't go, so we might be fucking up. You know? Yeah, especially, and it, and it hurts it with the amount of hype that some of these games will get. Right. Like, I, mean, I, I, don't, I don't think there was a lot of hype for Duke Nukem. Probably uh, by not. the point it came out for forever. I there mean, was no. a long time before. I mean, considering that, what, Duke Nukem 3D was early 90s, I think, like, 92 yeah. or 93, and it's like, that game is amazing and fantastic, and it's yeah. great, but, I mean... Colonial Marines still had that, oh my god, I can't wait for this game. Like, Half-Life 3, still, to this day, I mean, if if Valve, like, legitimately came out with a trailer um, that wasn't, like, 16-bit... I'd immediately be like 100% like yes, give it to me now. Right, yeah. I I don't know, man. Uh I mean that that's what 10 or 12 years. I mean, no, yeah, we're yeah. talking 2000 what, what what was that? 2004 was when was it 2004 when Half-Life 2 was released and it's like they've given hey, us and it wasn't episode, long after. It was they've given us episode stupid one. idea of well, we're going to do episodes. Yeah. Come the fuck on. That was a dumb idea. It, it was if, a dumb idea. <laughs> It was. It's like okay, but seriously, smaller games released more often. You forgot that more often part, <laughs> or the releasing part. Yeah, that that's the part they really seem to have forgotten is the releasing part, because they haven't released anything for years. I think well, Left for Dead Two was the last thing they released, yep. right? Or was it Dota? I don't know. I don't care I anymore. I mean, technically Dota Two, but I right. mean, I don't personally even count that. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah. You got Team Fortress Two, um, fucking uh, uh, Left for Dead Two, Portal Two, and then you never. They can't make it to three. No, they just they don't know how to count to three. They gave us Half Life, Half Life Episode One, Half Life Episode Two, and then just stopped. And you Which know, Half Life Episode Two was great. Yeah, I mean, and like I said, now you know it, it's 2018 now, and the la that that game released 14 years ago. What can they Ugh. do now? You know, the original Half Life Two released 14 years ago. Yeah, and would, I mean, would honest would be honestly be excited if they decided to drop Half Life Three now. I wonder if that's what they're trying to wait for. Like we, when we mentioned even this topic, we talked about the bot on Reddit. Yeah. That anytime you mention the release date of Half Life Three, it gets pushed back a month, and it's in like twenty one eighty five or something now. Yeah, some ridiculous like hundred fifty years into the future type shit. Like, <laughs> which hey, you know what? I'm not surprised. It's just one and of like, those things. Like, how how much more hyped can you get? How much more hyped can you be? you know with 14 years yeah. between between the releases it's like it's like when they did like all right let's take movies for example you know the original sandlot great movie 1991 or whatever it took them what 20 something years to do a sandlot 2 they and made a sandlot 2 they made a sandlot 2 and it was fucking awful they ser i i'm going to be perfectly honest i don't remember a sandlot 2 
That must have been fucking terrible. I I I don't even think it got a theatrical release. Like it was, I'm I'm like ninety nine percent sure it was a, oh a direct God, video. Sandlot. Oh, I kind of remember this. I think you're right. I think it was a direct uh, yeah. direct video. Like, it came out in two thousand five. Yeah, so you're looking at like a twenty four. I think it's tw- no. Jesus. Yeah, like Christ some lie. or no fifteen year difference because I think the original Sandlot was 1990, 1991. 14, 15 year difference is like, why? What's the point now? You know, you don't have, it's not like you had, it's not like there's that much to tell. I mean, those kids might be middle, you know, in their mid twenties now. It's with Hollywood. Hollywood's doing that lately. It with both with TV shows and movies. Right. And it's kind of like, uh, I mean, I don't, I don't care. I don't, I, I go with Ralph Garman. We already right. have one. We don't need another one. Right. Um, I just, I, I kind of hate it. I kind of hate that they want to reboot uh, like Zords on fucking Netflix now and all these other things that just, no, how new house parties coming out. What the fuck is wrong with you? Why? I mean, there's already four and like none of them are that great. No, the first one, first is, one was okay. The first one was, it's good. It's fun. It's a fun movie. Yeah. Uh, the second one is still fine, still acceptable. You get to the third and fourth, you're just kind of like, what? What's going on? <laughs> and for me, it's kind of like with Saul. Can how I go there's home just, from this there's party? Just, I don't want to be in this party many. anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, uh, this is not fun. And like, like, how many times can you do a movie about a party? Uh, the same party the same characters the same people like like it's a party what more can you do (laughs) but they made four of them and now you're you're telling me they're rebooting it and it's like why i don't even know if it's a reboot it might actually be a sequel so they're doing a fifth one are they gonna have kid and play in there as well (laughs) Are they gonna bring him back with his boxy afro hairstyle? You know, like, I do don't, it. I don't. <laughs> like, then some, we might have something here, boys. He's like forty-five years old. He's washed up. He's got to reclaim his throne of, of like best house party. I don't know. It's just he's still got to escape from his dad's house. His dad won't let him go to a party. <laughs> he's living in this basement because he's become it's a neat. morgue. <laughs> his dad's been dead for thirty years. Oh, jeez. <laughs> he just won't. He, I I got. I don't know, man. I don't know. You know what? Um, for the sake of posterity, I'll probably end up watching it. I mean, just I just hope it doesn't doesn't I, happen. <laughs> but if it does, fine. I guess. I I don't know, man. I just. All right, back to the topic. Um, let's get back to I the video worry. game. Well, you know, one thing that did happen recently. What's that? That uh similar to this whole long development thing um this is a big problem with like kickstarter projects too where people have kickstarted these games and then they're in development for these long periods of time get oh, delayed oh, over and are, over again are you uh talking about system shock yeah, yeah the, the hiatus man. they're on now they got your money now they uh yeah i mean you know we'll see about the game that's one of those things that's been a shit show from the start like it started off actually no not from the start from like maybe five minutes after the start because they get funded and like the demo the initial alpha they showed off was looked so amazing it was so incredible and they were doing it in unity and it was like it, it literally had the throwback to the old school graphics and the old school and the style that the original had and you know at at the beginning they're like oh yeah we're gonna keep it we're gonna keep it the same we're gonna keep it you know the way it was reboot it be a faithful reboot and then um like a year into the development cycle after i think like four or five months maybe not quite that long but months of silence they show off a demo an alpha demo of them redoing it in unreal and in Unreal, like the way they had done it, it had completely removed all of the original art style. <clears throat> it, and now it was just looking like a bland, generic, like sci-fi shooter, I guess. Mm. And everybody was pissed, because, understandably so. Because now, for one, you're showing off a demo that is not even nearly as far along as the original demo you showed. 
Two, it doesn't keep any of the promises you've made to us because now it's, uh, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't preserve that art style. It doesn't preserve that, that, uh, um, legacy. It's completely different now. It looks like a generic shit shooter. Uh, mm. all the, all the really cool shit they done. And now all that work, it started over. And it's like, well, what the fuck? And people it's... are understandably upset by that. And they should, you know, they completely should be. And, um, and like you saying, you're, you're getting around to that. Uh, they recently announced that <clears throat> they're putting the project on hiatus. They're yeah. putting it on hold. Like what the fuck? You know, like what, what is that? What, what, are, what are you doing now? Why, why are you putting yeah, it on hold? And and it's this thing where I think a big part of it is some of these companies go in with really high expectations, not really calculating the amount of money it does actually take to make a game off the bat. Like, right off the bat, if you're making a like modern, a nice-looking modern 3D game, yeah. you're going to spend a whole lot of time and a whole lot of money making that game with the people that it takes to make that game. If you want to live up to those expectations. Yeah. I mean, if you're going to, you're going to set expectations, you need to make sure that uh, you can afford those expectations. So if you're going to sit there, you're going to show something off or you're going to make the promises, um, you know, make sure you can, you can do it. You know, like with no man's sky, if you're going to sit there and you're going to, Hey, yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. Blah, blah, blah. Like, okay, that's cool. Can you do it? Yeah, yeah. And although, I mean, although that guy, you know, that guy, I do give some sympathy to because there were definitely interviews where people were asking him questions, and I think he was uh, kind of being pushed to give some of those yes. answers. I um, think once it was, um, was it Sony? Yeah, once that? once Sony, I, I don't know if they necessarily bought him. Um, but I know they started funding it a little more and yeah, uh, whatever. I can't remember whatever company got behind them, um, <clears throat> basically locked them in on that date. Yeah. And then it was at that point, he, he obviously was not a PR guy, especially yeah, in that famous interview where they're like, okay, is there multiplayer? Can you like, is there da da da? And the dude kind of like, uh, yeah it's like oh no child yeah no what are you doing i mean you can you can tell from (laughs) from interviews like that and and just general pr shit like that that he 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 gave that answer yeah and it it looked like he was being forced to like literally and that's like that's kind of shitty to be honest with you so i mean that game Um, does deserve a little hate um the game I, deserves. I think the game deserves hate. I don't obviously don't hate on people. Yeah, don't hate. I mean, on if the they're if they're like like that, whatever the fuck head from Gearbox. Yeah, is Randy out there Pitchford. Just yeah, Pitchford lying his ass off. You know, he's the douchebag. Don't or or um, or Peter or Peter like Molyneux. That. Fucking Peter, Peter Molyneux. Molyneux. Yeah, fuck oh that my guy God, too. Fuck Peter Molyneux. He he. Uh, Peter Molyneux is the Uwe Bowl of video games. Yeah. Who was that? Uwe Boll. He <laughs> yes. makes. He is a movie. Is a movie director who makes uh-huh. video game adaptations, and they're uh-huh. all Made. extremely Thankfully. bad. Extreme. <laughs> they are some of the worst movies you've ever seen. He did the Blood Rain movies. He did um, one of the I think House of the Living Dead. Yeah. He did. Shit. He he did like other like really good games. Turned them into just terrible awful, movies awful. yeah really <laughs> fucking bad movies and that actually and, reminds me of an anecdote um and you might have been you might be on the you this might be where you were headed luke where he goes yeah. to blizzard to ask to do the uh, world of warcraft movie or just a warcraft movie i don't remember and they told oh, him do love this fuck no we don't want yeah. you to ruin our properties if we're going to make a movie we'll just do it ourselves and yeah. I mean, not that they necessarily did it better because apparently their movie wasn't that good unless you were really into Warcraft. But yeah. I, I'm willing to bet that if he had gotten the rights, it would have been a million oh, times worse. Garbage. And like he, after after um, after he did something, he did something where he tried to get yeah tried to option some property, and it might have been the Warcraft one. I don't know, but he went on a either a Twitter or an Instagram rant, or maybe even a YouTube rant where he just he 
oh, fuck all of you, fuck you, my movie, blah, 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 and yeah. I do this. and Like, no, dude, you're fucking bad. Your movies are oh, terrible. He, he got so much hate. Um, it was also in one of the reasons he even was making these movies, not for any love of the material whatsoever. You could He just went for whatever was popular or whatever video game he could get his grubby little fucking disturbing hands in. Yeah. Um, he was doing it because of Germany's huge tax break if yep. you filmed in Germany. Yeah. And when they stopped that, his funding completely dried up. Yeah, Nobody because, would work with him at that point. Yeah, because now they would have to fund it completely rather than getting a huge bunch of that back in taxes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, they made money even when the movies <laughs> didn't make money. Yeah, even so when the movies were bad. So they were bad. totally willing to do it. He could yeah. make the movies. But without that, no. Nah, no one's yeah. giving that fuckhead money. And then yeah. he tried, and he challenged, like, any one of the, any somebody to a boxing match, and he picked, like, the skinniest little fucking twig of a guy and <laughs> beat the piss out of him. <laughs> I mean, you know, the guy has to protect his fragile masculinity somehow, right? Exactly, exactly. God. Like, I, there were other people that were, like, legitimately, like, no, I'll fight you. I'll box you right now. Let's go. And he, no, wasn't no, having No, I'm okay. No, I'll yeah. box him. And he, like, points to someone like Jake, who is, you know, 45 pounds emaciated <laughs> and looks like a homeless person when he's hair grows out. <laughs> so, I mean, you know, no. I... Sorry, Jake. I love you, buddy, but you, you look like but a homeless I mean, person yeah, when your he, hair he grows out. A twig of a dude. Like, yeah, no, it, no it, offense it, to that guy. Like, good on you for getting up there and throwing punches at you, bull. Like, if you hit him once, it's a win to me. Like, oh, absolutely, just fuck punch that him guy. in the face at least once. Yeah, no, get him good. Get him just get one good shot off at his face, and you yeah. you are a fucking hero in my book. Even if you didn't get a good shot in his face, just the fact that you were like, all right, fuck it, I'll box a wee bull, and then you get up there yeah. and you know whatever, man. I mean. He, he's a bitch. That's all I can say. I'll challenge yeah. him to a boxing match. Come on, man. Get us some notoriety. <laughs> I'll beat your fucking ass. Kick him in the dick and then we'll relieve the ring. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Do. Just do an upgrade. Just do, do an uppercut. Fucking uppercut. Get somebody to train you. Uppercut um, him. Uh, the To me, like as far as the Kickstarter bullshit goes with this topic... Um, there's worse games from Kickstarter, Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh God! Um, yeah. The whole Ouya debacle. The number one <laughs> example of delayed releases, and it's not fucking coming out. That still, I see videos of de- quote development and like in game. Yeah, bullshit. Fucking bullshit. Yeah, is Star Citizen. Oh yeah. And constantly, you see like. Uh, what what's some of those stupid clickbaity like what's that videos or different stuff where they'll show the developers videos that they have for Star Citizen? Yeah, this yeah. game. It's uh, not happening, guys. Twenty you... had a twenty twelve Kickstarter, raised two million dollars. They've then started selling things on their website, like ships and things like that, making more money. Um, to the point where some of these ships are hold priced up, at hold up, hold fifteen thousand dollars. Stop! 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 I need to quantify what you just said. They yeah. are selling microtransactions for a game that isn't out. Yep. Let that sink in. Yep. Let that sink in for a minute. They're selling microtransactions for a game that does not exist yet, or yeah. at all. I don't know for sure. So <laughs> you're buying pieces of micro DLC content that's not actually micro DLC because you're not getting anything for a game that has no actual release, not an alpha, not a demo, not a beta, not a whatever. So let that sink in for a minute. So let's and see. What are some of the values of those ships, Luke? Uh, 15, this is an older article, by the way, which I'll get into in just a second. This is $15,000 some of these ships are priced at. $15,000 for a piece of micro DLC, micro transaction bullshit that doesn't exist. Yeah. Uh, let's see. When is this? So, I don't uh, know what more some, to say. Some things about this is, uh, the Kickstarter was in 2012. Right. Right. Raised 2 million. Um, you've got the release date was originally in 2014 that got delayed to 2015 or 2016 
now the game has it when this article was really uh written generic placeholder in 2017 it's now listed as to be determined on google <laughs> um apparently the sh there's ships now that go up to twenty two thousand five hundred dollars oh that you God, can buy dude. yeah <clears throat> they according to the wired and I don't know when this article came out exactly. Um, they've raised seventy-seven million dollars for this game. It looks like okay. I, I I'm not a hundred percent correct here. There is an incomplete alpha build of the game. Oh. Um, yeah. So we're not. I, I'm wrong. I'm gonna go so ahead. They and have an let alpha. you say that they have an incomplete alpha version of the multiplayer part of it. Um. They they released version 3.0 of the alpha, um, a patch and all that, um, in December. And, like, this game has raised $174 million since oh its Kickstarter. God. How the fuck is it not done yet? So what are you doing article. that is taking so fucking long? Not developing the game, duh. That's, yeah, yeah no. it, that's exactly what it seems. I love that like, the first thing released was a hangar. <laughs> it's like a garage where you could have your ships. You spent twenty five hundred dollars on twenty five hundred dollars, oh guys. That would God. pay my rent for four months. Like, Jesus Christ, four months rent. Like, and people have spent that on a piece of DLC for a game that only has an incomplete alpha multiplayer release. I mean, there is somebody who sued uh, to be refunded his $2,500 from the Kickstarter. At, at the time of the, uh, the first article I was reading. So like sometime in 2000, before 2017, right. Or right. in the middle of 2017. So like, I, I feel bad for anybody who still is like, nope, this game's coming out. It's totally going to be worth this. Like, go play EVE Online or whatever that... It's EVE Online that they have the super expensive ships, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that's where it yeah, has, like, its own economy that. that rivals, like, yeah. California or some shit. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, I, I'm also not 100% correct on the single player side of it. I guess there's... Star Citizen single player game is called Squadron 42 and is sold separately from Star Citizen. So it's not even... Yeah. Jesus fucking Christ. Um, the single-player portions of Star Citizen and the MMO portion of Star Citizen are sold separately. Uh -huh. um, Is one of them out? Uh, apparently, Squadron 42, which is the single-player portion, ha is, um, has been on sale since February of 2016. And um, uh -oh. apparently... The game now, because because of the split, uh, either product, either game was forty five bucks, right? Mm. Um, but if you want to buy both parts or whatever, uh, the other part can be added on for fifteen dollars, making the game sixty dollars. So it's a triple A title price for a game that's oh. not complete. Yeah, Squadron Forty Two. It's like it's not even final. It's not out yet. It's coming out in twenty eighteen now. <laughs> but it's got Mark Hamill as a voice actor. Yeah, it's got Mark Hamill and uh Jillian Anderson. Like, okay, that's that's fucking cool. Go, Gary. And just, you know, oh my god, I just I don't get it. Like, how is this continuing? And not to mention that Crytek sued the shit out of them for copyright oh, yeah. infringement. So it's like. I mean, don't get me wrong. If this comes out, Squadron 42 could be amazing. Don't, like, maybe that'll be great. It's just, Jesus fucking Christ. I mean, granted, it's not, it's not, okay. It's not. I mean, we're only talking since 2012, so it's only been six years, okay? Yeah. Um, something like Final Fantasy or Breath of the Wild had a, a longer development cycle. Um, Breath of the Wild started off as a concept, if you'll remember, uh, back in like 2003 or whatever in the you know the heyday of the gamecube um yeah and of course final fantasy 15 i think development for that started shortly after uh final fantasy 7 or 8 
because it was originally supposed to be something completely different from what it ended up being. Um, because Final Fantasy 13 was actually where that was supposed to start because it was supposed to be a, a sort of a secondary main series. And because Final Fantasy 13 didn't succeed, um, because I guess it was terrible in a lot of people's eyes, um, they started, they shifted development, they shifted focus, and started making 15 into what it's become now. Uh, but originally it was supposed to be like a side project. Um, it has a really strange title because, of course, it, it does. Uh, let me see here, hold up. Um, just because we're getting into this kind of idea now, it was supposed it was supposed to be Fabula Novo Chrysalis Final Fantasy. What the um, hell is that name? I, dude, I don't. Amazing. Know. Yeah, <laughs> it's a great name. I, I, I would break my tongue trying to pronounce it, probably. Right. Um, and Final Fantasy fifteen was originally supposed to be like that game. And it was supposed to be part of that series, and um, and Final Fantasy XIII was the first game that was supposed to be released in that series. And when it didn't, it, when it didn't work, um, things switched around. And we're talking like, we're talking like 2006 when this was when this was all started and going on. And um, 13 flopped, so. Well, for some reason, they released two sequels to it. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but, of course, uh, they, they announced it, uh, what, not, 2013 was when they finally announced Final Fantasy XV in its current form. And, uh, yeah, it, it took them three more years after that to finally release the game. I mean, when I, I get that, the, like it's something very different when you're talking about Kickstarter stuff. Yeah, where people have already put their money in. Right. I mean, and I like, get what I'm, you're saying. I'm, it's just six years. All I was making the point was six years is yeah. isn't isn't no, that no, long. It's not. But at the same time, to what they've shown and what you've gotten so far, the fact that you've yeah. not gotten in six years, you've not really gotten anything more than an incomplete alpha. You don't even have. A, a tangible product beyond and, and just like I said an incomplete alpha and there are people buying the microtransactions for it like how, how I'm looking is at these and like to say that there's a ship that costs that there's ships that cost fucking a hundred dollars just it, it it's not something conceptually that I can take in and I'm looking at their website right now and just the fact that this is it's it's a, it's an in-game ship uh, I guess you get the game too, Star Citizen. You get the Star Citizen digital download. Um, $125. Um, the ships are insured. There's six months of insurance. What does that like, even What does that even mean? I don't know. And the fact that it's there both makes me like like I'm I'm laughing and at the same time I'm enraged on a like inconceivable level of how fucking retarded that is. Yeah, I I don't I don't get like that. I Is I that don't. 6 months if you fucking crash your ship into a goddamn moon? Uh it's up oh, I I got another one. I'm good to go. Like are there stipulations? Like does that 6 <laughs> months extend when you get a new one? <laughs> yeah, does that value diminish over time because mileage? Like, <laughs> I I don't know I don't get it I <laughs> it's just shit like more this dude the the people making this game man it's it's more ambitious than like probably just about any video game that's been released um but Jesus Christ I mean for me just the fact that you know you started with the Kickstarter in 2012 with 2.1 million dollars and since then you've raised 170 million or some odd dollars and you know you don't have a game yet you don't have a game yet it seems like they took more time developing ways to make more money with these extra ships and things like that than actually developing the game that's where all the development's going into. They've got, like, four people working on the yeah. game engine and all that, and then, like, a team of, like, 30 people making DLC. <laughs> or that they spent a lot of time making those pretty obviously pre-rendered videos than yeah. actually making a, like, in-game workable... Just, oh my god. 
I, I, $900. Okay. I, I just honestly, wrecking crew pack. I'm going to go ahead and say this. I could believe um, that their footage they released could be in game in the sense that they built an engine just to render it. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's where their development has gone into. Just, just, you know, taking the Crytek engine or, you know, whatever and making cutscenes in it. I, that's what they've done, man. I, I don't know, man. Uh, people, I, dude, 170, 170 million dollars, six years, and you still don't even have like a demo. It's an incomplete alpha, <laughs> and you don't have oh, oh, a definitive this one release comes date. With lifetime insurance for nine hundred and fifty dollars, okay, but it doesn't come with the game. We're gonna it stop. Comes with a bunch of different ships, though. We're gonna stop. <laughs> I just man, okay. Let's move like, on to we'll do one last game because uh, we're you running out. That's gonna be good. You gotta really be hoping that that game's gonna be good. Because if you get to, tired uh, of that shit in a month, you, uh, you need to be praying to every single god in existence um, that that has ever been conceptualized, that has ever done <laughs> any like had any sort of mythos around them. And not only that, you need to give Jesus a hand job in order like, for you to, to even think about getting that game. And that I it's feel be bad. Good. I bought the DLC for Breath of the Wild, and I haven't gone back to play any of it. Right. But if you dropped nine hundred dollars for a fucking ship in a game. Full I'm disclosure. Until I die. Full disclosure. Nine hundred dollars is what I make in a two week period. Oh my god. Yeah, like two week yeah. period i make just i make a little over 900 like 935 940 i two weeks that's that's 80 hours of my life that i devote to a place that's all that's what i get and to sit there and spend 900 dollars on a piece of micro dlc for a game that is only in a unfinished buggy as hell alpha state no yeah no Okay, anyway, well, like I said, anyway, we, we're going to move on. We're going to do one more game because I, I don't want to keep doing this. I want to move on to a more positive um, positive thing. Um, we haven't shot on anything in a while. <laughs> right, that's true, but let, let's, let's, let's steer back to one game uh, that did take yeah. a, a, a while and ended up being fantastic, um, and that's going to be Resident Evil 4. Um, Resident Evil oh, 4 yeah. is... Seriously, to me, to this day, I'm sure Resident Evil 7 is great. I haven't played it yet, but Resident Evil 4 to this day is still the best Resident Evil that I have I can say. And I've played all of them except 5. So, <clears throat> I can yeah. say that 4 is, is, the, is the best. It's my favorite. I go back and play it. I've bought it on every single system it's been on. Um, that... You know, Xbox 360, Wii, GameCube, mm -hmm. um, PC. PC. I got I got the HD remaster because hell yeah, um, the game was originally to be a, to, it was originally being developed as a like a super actiony game, and at some point Capcom's like, okay, this is this is probably way more action than we would ever intend for a Resident Evil game. Um, so instead, they they stopped that, and what they had worked on at that point actually became Devil May Cry which is fucking oh, awesome. Oh, wow. Yeah, and that's why uh, if you compare the looks of Dante and Leon from those games, they look so similar. Um, oh, I never thought of that, but yeah, you're not wrong. Yeah, that, it's because that, or, that original work that they showed off, or, or rather that original work they had done was like, okay, this is this is way too much. So yeah, they made it Devil May Cry. And um, so there were at least two other versions of Resident Evil 4 before we got the one that we have now. And uh, the first one was set in the castle, like like the game final game ended up being. But instead of Ganados and the Castilian, uh, whatever his name, I can't remember, Salazar. And what was the little weird dude's name? Or was that Salazar? I don't know. Anyway. Salazar was the weird dude. Yeah. Uh, what, so who was the leader? Sadler. Sadler. Yeah, okay. So you had Salazar and all that. Um, before then, before it had the Ganados and all them, it actually fe it actually featured the classic zombies, um, mm -hmm. but uh, they they didn't they didn't care much for that one, and uh, while they wanted it to be connected to the previous series, they didn't want it to be like 
100% a ripoff clone type thing. Um, so there was another version where it was more supernatural ghosty type shit where uh, what they showed at E3 was Leon fighting like haunted dolls and like shitty ghosts and haunted so, uh, yeah Sadler, like haunt, I possessed suits of armor. <laughs> Early on. I mean you're not wrong if you this creepy little fuck looks like, like a goddamn you, puppet like you I think you can compare like the idea of being possessed to the idea of being infected with a parasite like the Lust Plagas so it's like yeah I could see I, I could totally sit there and draw the comparison there that he was a puppet because technically he was maybe but uh, yeah no like that game originally wasn't at all what it it was originally Devil May Cry so you see what Devil yes. May Cry is, and that was originally what Resident Evil 4 was going to be. That turned out good. Yeah, I, I'm actually kind of glad they went the direction they went in and uh, made Devil May Cry Devil May Cry, because, I mean, the original Devil May Cry was great. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I, I'm... Resident Evil 4. Uh, if there, if that's a game you somehow haven't played yet, uh go play that <laughs> just just go play it, that. it turns it kind of it turns the resident evil style on its head in a good way and yeah. then i think to me the next game is seven yeah I just ignore i mean five five six, was seven. not good um five was five was at least playable but it six. was in that time of everybody has to have co-op yeah and they're gonna yeah. force it on you no matter what and that so, just kind of ruins the game. Yeah, because six you, was just it was a giraffe getting a blowjob. Um, it's like yeah, five. You've got, by the way, you you got a partner, and you either have to get somebody to play with you, or you're gonna have the worst AI partner ever. Yeah. And then, like Pretty you much. said, um, six is, I I mean, I couldn't I, I bought six, um and ended up returning it the same day <laughs> because like, I played the demo and I hated the demo, but I thought, you know, I should, I should give it a, I should give it a shot. And I did end up buying it. And I, like I, I played it and it was somehow worse than the, the demo they released. And <laughs> so I immediately removed it. Um, from my Xbox, and just, I took it straight back. I'm like, no, uh, uh-uh. not yeah. not doing this. Not fucking no. This is terrible. It was just bad. It was it was bad. You had you had bad controls. You had too many quick, heavy, heavy reliance on quick time type events, and it it was just an that overall novelty wore off real quick. Yeah, it did. Like, like I'm even of... playing. I'm, I'm playing Bayonetta now. Yeah, in that game was back then and it's not they're not bad quick time events Mm -hmm. but i'm still kind of like i could i could do without these (laughs) yeah i know just let me punch shoot and kick shit you know like let me let me summon bowser's fist and put it in that thing's face so that is fun but yeah i those just just fuck games that just spent entirely too long in development there's a couple other games uh, like Spore was. It took them eight years yeah. to make that. La Noir, but that game is super complex, so it, it's understandable that that took seven years to develop. Um, Two Human is another one of those games that uh, took a while to develop and ended up just not being great. So, yeah, and uh, yeah. You, that that that's one thing I want. I want to go ahead and. Just one final thing I kind of want to touch on is that that game, um, Silicon Knights, the developer behind it, actually uh, had Microsoft pull the game from the Xbox Marketplace in 2013. Oh, did they? And then put it back on later on? Uh, that they might have, but I I can see to hear that uh, they they served Microsoft a recall notice to get the game moved from the marketplace. Jeez, I remember that game. I had a friend of mine's, uh, well, a friend of mine's brother, his uh, a, a mutual friend, kind of that I knew through him. They, for some reason, absolutely fell in love with that game, right? And put like sp- something like fucking six hundred hours into that game. Ouch. Like, just wow. I was just like, but it's terrible. And you they're know like, what? 
I know, but I'm still playing the shit out of it. You know what? That that makes me feel better about my addiction to Skyrim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because at least Skyrim, um, at at least when it was released, was a good game. <laughs> it was a legitimately good game. Yeah, now I mean, it was it's a trash. Bethesda good game. Yeah. Now it's trash. Like I will openly admit it is trash. And I'm still in all that I put another 175 hours into vanilla Skyrim on my Switch, but all that's all that's over now is in the past. So let's move on. Fucking life sync of a game. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, oh you no, got one more? We go. Yes. Now, it has nothing to do with this, but I've been playing this game. I bought it like last week. I'm sorry, you cut out. Uh, what was the game? I bought this game on Switch. Okay. Bought it like last week. Uh, it is like the most uh just what the fuck japan game that i've personally played at least in a long that i can remember right uh called ace of seafood ace of sea yeah i i've uh i've seen that yeah. i've seen that pop up on the marketplace it's one of the games that uh, they've suggested to me and i'm like i i don't know yeah uh, I just the the description of this game, like looking at it, it's literally it, it looks like just fish swimming around with like a HUD of like a, a fucking I don't know like a jet ty- style game is I, what the HUD looks like. If you're not like if you if you disregard the HUD um and just look at like it looks like shot, just fish swimming around. Yeah, like it looks like you know you're you're a fish simulator. <laughs> yeah. It's it, the description though is just so batshit amazing. Uh, I just gotta read it real quick. Uh, in the seas of the distant future, humans have all but disappeared. Now fish and crustaceans fight great wars, shooting deadly rays of light at each other. You can now openly admit to the desire we all share to become seafood, <laughs> because Ace of Seafood is an action game where you can form a party of of up to six fish crustaceans etc and scavenge the depths of the ocean while battling other life forms and increasing the strength of your own forces can I... fish crabs squid sharks seals even warships because okay. Okay. they're a fish uh, no first off no i don't want to be <laughs> it's not even done open world level design but you freely explore the sea taking control of a wide variety of life forms as you win more battles you will gain access to more unique and powerful life forms. By the way, life forms in the world will have the ability to shoot powerful laser beams that can destroy, uh, that can destroy pretty much anything. This game has just arterable environments, and I can't believe that it does. <laughs> and it's kind of amazing that it does. <laughs> it is so, like, I mean, it, it the description, it lives right up to that description. You fucking start as a goddamn sardine or a crab or some shit and you shoot lasers at <laughs> other fish and when you kill them you take their dna and it's it says breed i believe it probably should say clone and I you mean, clone more fish that is and um... they shoot lasers with you it is oh um, it's a beautiful beautiful game it's so bad it's good wow what i didn't I, know um, I, I got nothing i yeah, uh, it's so just it's pure <laughs> and it's insanity. It's fun. Uh it's hard as fuck too. Uh I had no idea like I, I this is the first time I've ever heard of this game. Right. Apparently it's come out on the PS4 and it's even on Steam. Right. Um and some of these Steam reviews are fucking amazing. Um tried to sync the Bismarck using only six sardines, ten out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> this game just transformed me from a simple mortal into an ace of seafood. I have ascended from my human life form into the str- uh, strongest being of them all, the pufferfish. For the shrimp empire. The shrimp empire. Okay. It's, all right. We, it's we, so good. No, no Everyone more. should play this game. <laughs> Everyone oh, should be a if you got a, If you got a Switch, guys, <laughs> go play that game. Because Luke um, is gushing over it. It, it doesn't mean so it's fun. good, though. But... Luke is gushing over. That's good it. enough. I think it was like nine ninety nine Steam or on uh, Switch. It's like twelve dollars on Steam, and it's a fucking sequel. Apparently, there was another game that came before it. That makes you kind of think, like, what what's going on, guys? Oh my um, god! Yeah, the battles, the fact that you breed battleships, just it's crazy. All right. The hardest All right. enemy I fought are fucking penguins. Fuck <laughs> those penguins. 
That reminds uh. me, and this is completely unrelated, but uh, using a drone, they found a colony down in the, uh, the Antarctic. Antarctic. Yeah, mm-hmm. where they found 1.5 million Adelaide penguins. Just chilling there that we had no idea we were there. Yeah, just a and mega colony. Like, Fuck, the humans found us. A mega colony of penguins. That's kind of cool. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and cut it off there, though, before uh, Luke starts talking about his fish game again. Um, Seriously, the fucking barracuda is the shit. All right, man. We'll, we'll take uh, we'll take your word for it. Um, so for the Ungodly Geeks, I was Joe. Uh, I was Luke. And we had Ruga. Was... Hi, Ruga. Yes, was here. thank you for not making me say my own name. Yeah, because you fucked it up last time. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Ruga something. Fuck EA, as always. Whatever. Fuck well, penguins. Whatever. No, Fuck we like penguins. penguins. No, we like penguins. <laughs> all right, guys. That's See y'all it. later. Bye. Oh, yeah. Like us, share, comment, subscribe, all those things that YouTubers tell you to do. Yeah, do, do that stuff. Uh, go give us yes. a buck on Patreon. Give us a like, share. Uh, rate us, us on iTunes, please. Rate us on iTunes. That's that's please. like the best check thing you can do. Check out my mixtape. Yeah, check out Ruga's mixtape mix on tape. SoundCloud. Um... <laughs> And that's Lithuanian it. and loving it. <laughs> <laughs> the Fresh Princess of Lithuania. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, you guys have a good day. I'm going to stop Bye. recording now. Bye.